Yummy wasn't your average kid and didn't have much in life. He was abused by his mother, resulting in him being removed by state workers after they found him covered in bruises with cigarette burns on his body, including his buttocks. He then moved with his grandmother in his early years. Excuse me, I didn't tell you to come out here now. Okay. I didn't ask for no appreciation to come as of now. She planning the funeral. She would like what is for your problem? Uh, to get her settlement season right now. Her what? She's planning the funeral. Who, who she's planning? The That's the grandmother. This is her house. Oh. Robert is my grandson, and I love him. And we hope everybody else loves him. In spite of what somebody said, I don't care what nobody said. Mm -hmm. Robert is mine. Until he got into legal trouble and spent time in the juvenile facilities. He was allegedly robbing, getting into shootouts, and breaking into houses at the early ages of 9 and 11, even though his family says something different. Hey, man, he was a little kid. He was a kid? Yeah. Like he, like he, he like when you see, how old was he? He was 11. 11? Yeah. What was he like, like when he was a little, little kid? He was a sweet little kid. And he wasn't violent. And he wasn't bad. The way they got it, the way they talking about now, that's not true. It's not true. He would join a gang called Eight Ball around his age too, which now they go by Rudeville slash Dirty Perry Crazy. They are mostly black disciples located on 108th and Wentworth. They are also clicked up with 104L, Snake Pit, Trouble City, and Princetown, which makes up Wentworth Mob. They beef with sets like 107 D Block. 103 Shannon Block, MMG, Luryland, and 115 Ville, and East Spot. Yummy joined the eight ball black disciples at only the age of nine or ten. And he had BDN tatted on his right forearm. And at the age of eleven, Yummy had a rap sheet including charges of theft, arson, and armed robbery. Yummy was known around the neighborhood as the kid of terror. He also picked fights with other kids and stole from the local convenience stores. You live across the street from Robert. Mm -hmm. Did you know him? Mm -hmm. What did it look like? If I was to see him on the street, what, who, what would I see? Dark skin, short, braids in his hair. Brazen? Braids. Braids? How long did you know him? Since I've been staying around here. How long was that? About a year. Yeah? Mm -hmm. What was he like? Bad. You mean bad? Like when you say bad, what do you mean? Fighting still, breaking the people out. I think you should have asked this question. Yeah? Shut up! What, what Somebody just open up that door. Did you ever see like the police coming to his house? Every other day. And him being a kid, he was referred to as Shorty, which made him the lowest ranking gang member in the gang. So the eight ball set would make him do all the dirty work. They would allegedly give him candy for doing dirty work. That's why they would call him Yummy, allegedly. But it was August 28th, 1994. It was the later evening hours on a Sunday when officers responded to calls of shots fired. When Chicago police officer William Cullinan, he found a 16-year-old boy suffering from gunshot wounds near 108th Street and Perry Avenue. The victim was Keontae Britton. He was bleeding from the abdomen and was moaning to Cullinan leaning down. The officer asked him, who shot you? He responded and said, Yummy shot me. Britton said, I think his name is Robert, which was Robert Sandifer, aka Yummy. But on that day, the shootings he was linked to were occurring faster than the police could investigate them. Less than two hours later, after Officer Cullinghan supplied a detective with the information he had to pick up a photo of Yummy when he was notified of another shooting. In this incident, two teens were hit. Siobhan Dean, 14 years of age, died immediately. Sammy Say managed to escape with a graze wound in one of his legs and a bullet wound in his left hand. But Siobhan, she's beautiful. Well, I live just right here. I heard two shots. And when I heard the two shots, my two kids was um, on the porch. So I was sitting to the table eating my supper at the time. Ran to the door, and so my daughter said, make, them all, make the kids come in. So I told my son and my granddaughter to come in the house. So as they came in the house, I sat back down. So some told me to get up and go look out the window. I ran out the back door with my shoes off. And he said, somebody's daughter is laying down here hurt. So, you know, I don't care who child is, I want to help. So I ran out the back door and ran right here. 
And I still didn't know it was my niece laying down there. And so my brother, he ran out the door and he, he, he ran right there. And then he, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure he said that he knew it was his daughter. The police were there so quick. I mean, they was here on the robber. The police, they came and put white gloves on and they felt my niece, you know, but I knew, you know, she wasn't gonna make it. His intended target was a gang member that was leaving his house at the time on that block. Yummy went on a run immediately after these shootings, after people told him that the police was out looking for him. Plus, some of the members from 8-Ball Gang came together to figure out what they would do with Yummy. After this situation started getting major attention from the media, and it turned into a high-profile case overnight. By midnight, he was being sought out by Chicago police as well as FBI agents. Over 20 to 30 officers was on the lookout for a 4, 6, 11-year-old. For the next three days, he was on a run and even stopped at a family member's house. But when she went back in the house and came back out, Yummy was gone. Cassandra Cooper testified she was on her porch with a group of children when they pointed out Sandifer, aka Yummy, as he walked down the street. Aware that the police were searching for him, she called out to him and he walked over. Cooper said after she decided to walk the boy home, he scurried away. Right after a police squad car pulled up, to question the other children about being out after curfew. Cooper said Yummy even returned after the police left. He said that he wanted to turn himself into the police and he wanted his grandmother to turn him in. So Yummy gave her his grandmother's number and so Cooper went to call her. And a few minutes later after she called him, his grandmother Janie Fields drove down the street slowly. Cooper flagged her down and introduced herself to her. She told her that she was the one that called her and she had him. But by the time they walked up to the porch, Yummy was gone again. Jamisha Cooper, her 18-year-old daughter, testified in court that when her mother was talking to his grandmother, Fields, 14-year-old Derek Hardaway, who was also a member of the 8-Ball set, he told her that he was going to take Yummy out of town and keep him safe. Right as Yummy climbed over the porch and left, Cassandra Cooper, the mother, said she was stunned at how quickly Yummy disappeared. But the grandmother believed that she didn't have him at all. 14-year-old Derek Hardaway then met up with his brother, 16-year-old Craig Hardaway. Instead of keeping Yummy safe, they was ordered by higher-ranking gang members to take him out. The reason was for him being a high risk of him getting caught and snitching on people. So 16-year-old Craig Hardaway and 14-year-old Derek Hardaway drove to a railroad underpass at East 108th Street and forced Yummy to his knees and shot him twice in the back of the head. The police would find his lifeless body in the early morning hours of September 1st, 1994. The Hardaway brothers were convicted of Yummy's murder. Derek Hardaway received 45 years in prison. He was released in 2016, and Craig Hardaway, who pulled the trigger while his brother drove the getaway car, will be released December 8th, 2023. Either you do this or you die. And that's how it always boils down. It's, it's not like any river wall when you live in that lifestyle. A lot of people don't know that, that he actually took me home. And I can just feel someone right. So when I asked him what's going on, and he told me everything, I refused to let him go by himself. I should have been more of a big brother than just get out, right? More than 400 people attended Yummy's funeral, and this was major headlines for the news back then. But that'll be about it for this video. Make sure you like or dislike, comment, and subscribe. And let me know down in the comments what y'all want to see next. And as always, stay blessed, stay well. Yeah, yeah, I'm out.